All right, thanks so much for joining my beautiful people. This is ERGJ, Certified Financial Educator, back with Money Mind Shift, How Rich People Think. And we are going through the book, How Rich People Think by Steve Saibo. Steve, better get my check. Now, here's the deal, guys. Um, first and foremost, wealth begins in the mind. Wealth begins in the mind. If you want to have rich results in your life, then you must begin to put rich things into your thought process. I mean, how many financial books have you read this month, this, this year? How many things about money have you absorbed yourself with this year? And so uh, if you want to get out of debt, if you want to you know, live the uh, prosperous life, if you want to have abundance and prosperity, you want to have riches in your life, well, I'm telling you that your, your mind must be wealthy long before your wallet. Change the way you think and you can actually change the results. And so when people ask me, how did I go from being a financial zero to a financial hero? It's just really simple. It's really simple. I began to read. And then I began to apply the things that I read to my life. And that's how I got out of debt. That's how I was able to start to acquire wealth. And you can do the same thing too. It's just a decision. 15 minutes a day can keep broke away. That's right, 15 minutes a day. So today we're gonna to be reading for 15 minutes, going through this book. And hopefully as we are on day number 27 of this 100 day journey, just think about it, 100 days. 100 days, 15 minutes a day, I believe you're going to change. I believe you're going to have to, you're going to start to see these rich results, this rich harvest come into your life because you're planting a seed into your thought process. That's right, you're planting a seed into your thought process. Man, the book that you don't read, it won't help. But we're reading this book today and that's where we're going to get started. So hey, I know you don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time. 15 minutes, let's get started. Day number 27. The middle class believes working believes in working for money. World class believes in working for fulfillment. The middle class believes in working for money. The world class believes in working for fulfillment. The masses have been handling down bad advice about their occupation money relationships for centuries. Their philosophy, is, their philosophy is to spend the majority of your waking hours toiling away for the sole purpose of economic survival while being grateful for the opportunity. Think about that. Their philosophy is to spend the majority of your waking hours toiling away for the sole purpose of economic survival while being grateful for opportunity. Is that what I've been doing for 20 years of my life? Just toiling away just to survive and then just being grateful for the opportunity to survive? Oh, there's got to be a different way. Oh, I never thought of it like that. I never looked at it like that, that I am just toiling away all of these hours, 40 hours a week, 50, 40 hours a day, 50 weeks out of the year, only to quite possibly retire broke. And then I'm grateful for the opportunity. Uh, 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 something got to change. Something got to change. And we, that's why we changed it. We changed it by reading the book. All right, let's keep going. With the exception of times when this was the best society had to offer, it's not only a bad strategy for accumulating wealth, but a terrible roadmap for life in general. In modern day America and every other free market economy, this way of thinking assaults the human spirit. This way of thinking assaults the human spirit. This way of thinking assaults the human. Now, here's the deal, guys. We see this all the time, man. We see people. I, here's, what I, here's what happened for me. I went to work, right? And I was like, man. All you got to do is go, if you have a job right now or whatever you do, I don't know. All you got to do is go in there and just look. And what I saw when I was at the job, when I was working in that place or toilet for hours and hours, I looked around and I just see one happy spirit in all of the cubicles. I saw people on their phone. I saw people yawning. I saw people just waiting for the day to end. And I said, this can't be life. This can't be my life. It might be their life, but it's not going to be my life. I'm not going to go every day just... I'm grateful. Absolutely. I'm grateful. I'm grateful when I had the job because I was using the job to get to the place where I can get to my work. And we talked about this earlier. You guys missed this earlier. But hey, if you got a job, that's fine. We understand you got to make a living. But use your job so you can get to your work. What is your work? Your mission, whatever that is for you. Use it, leverage it so you can get to your mission, so you can get to your work. Find a way, man, because when I was looking in these cubicles and I saw no one that was happy to be there. No one else was like, I'm excited to come to work today or come to this job today. It was more like, I'm just doing this so I can pay my rent. I'm just doing this so I can put food on my table. And what I'm saying is, I know there's plenty of ways that I can do that. And once my mind started to shift about, man, I'm making $20 an hour. 
eight dollars a day, one hundred and sixty dollars a day to be somewhere that I don't want to be. How can I make one hundred and sixty dollars a day and do something that I love to do? How can I replace my income? And the way that I do that, man, and I'm telling you guys, and maybe you're not going to get it. I don't know. You don't have an income problem. You have an idea problem. You have an idea problem. It's the ideas that are going to make you a fortune. It's the ideas that you work on, that you develop, that's going to get you to a place where you can walk away from your job because you have come across an idea that can replace your income. Everybody's worried about losing their income. And while they're thinking about the fear of loss, they're not thinking about the faith of gain. And I want everybody to put that in comments below. Faith of gain. We focus so much on the fear of loss, the loss of a job that we hate. The loss of the job that we can't stand to go to, we're, we're, we, we fear to lose that. But we don't focus on the faith of gain. What can I gain by working on my ideas? What can I gain by taking just an hour of my day to work on my dreams? What can I gain? And what I'm telling you, what you can gain is called freedom. Freedom to me is options. Freedom to me is having options. That's what financial freedom. Having the option to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And I just believe I'm around good people that's going to do the right thing when they get their freedom. They're not going to abuse their freedom. They're already abusing being a slave. Okay, I will say that for another time. You guys, let's get back to the book. The book got some things to say. The rich have always known working for the sole purpose of making money is the worst strategy for building wealth. Let me repeat that again. The rich have always known working for the sole purpose of making money is the worst strategy for building wealth. Now you got to ask yourself, am I working for the sole purpose of making money? Is that, where I'm at? is that where I'm at in my life? Am I working for the sole purpose of making money? And most people, if you ask them, if you didn't get paid to do what you do, would you still be there? They'll say no, but yet they're still there and they're not trying to find a way out. And I can and I can honor a person. I can, I can really respect a person who is at least trying to find a way to do what they love to do. That's where my respect comes in. My respect is in your journey, in your in your in your in, in your 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 time to try that you're at least giving it an effort to get out of a place that you hate to get to a place that you love. Let me repeat that again. I can respect the person who is at least trying, giving it the effort to get away from the place that they hate to get to a place that they love. And in a good old uh, movie, The Hurricane it said, "Hate might have got me in this place, but love is gonna bust me out." <laughs> Love is going to bust you out. <laughs> the great ones go through an extensive, introspective, soul searching process to discover what they love to do and combine it with their unique talents and abilities. These people appear to be working hard, but the truth is they're not working at all. They're doing something that they would do for free because they love it. My late business partner, the great Bill Gold, was known around the world as the father of professional public speaking industry. One of the greatest pieces of the wisdom I've heard him deliver from stages all over this world was this. When you're doing what's something you love to do, the only reward you need is the experience of doing it. The wonderful paradox of this wisdom is when you're doing something you love and you're very good at it, the world will gladly make you rich. Let me repeat that again. When you're doing something that you love and you're very good at it, the world will gladly make you rich. Now, here's the deal. I found something I love to do. And the, it's true for me. The world is gladly making me rich. Why? Because I'm providing a service. I'm serving more people. I'm solving a problem. And in return for the value that I bring to the marketplace, they bring value into my storehouse, which is the money that they pay for my services that solves their problems. What problem are you serving? How many people are you serving? I'm sorry. What problem are you solving? How many people are you serving? This is what the rich focus on. It's two things that you need to focus on. If you want to be rich, you want to get out of debt, you want to increase your income, solve more problems, serve more people. That's it. That's it. That's it. Solve more problems, serve more people. How many problems did you solve yesterday? You wonder why you didn't get paid more, right? How many people did you serve yesterday? And then you wonder why your income hasn't increased. It's very simple. Solve more problems, serve more people, get rich. And then guess what? Repeat the process. Do it again. Solve more problems and serve more people. That's the cycle. It's just that simple. It's not easy because what's the, the hardest thing to do is to do some self introspection and to find out what you love to do, what you're great at. That's the hardest thing to do. 
most people won't take the time to look into themselves, look in the mirror, and really just take some notes and jot some stuff down. Most people won't take the time to get a coach that can help pull that stuff out of them. They just won't take the time. They're more involved in the process of being miserable than they are in the process of being happy. How can I say that? Because anytime something negative comes out on the news, they talk about it forever. Anytime something positive comes out on the news, it gets one like and they move on. Most people are focused so much on being miserable that they can't take the time to find out how to be happy, how to be free, how to get out of debt. You got to decide which one you're going to be. All right. Once you find it, I'm sorry, instead of get, instead of setting out to find work with the most profit potential, this is what we've been taught. Hey, don't go to school to get the degree that you want to get. Go to get go to the school to get the degree that's going to pay you the most money. This is the this is the wisdom of the crowd. Instead of setting out to find work to, with the most potential profit potential, focus on work that has the most fulfillment potential. Instead of finding work, work uh, setting out to find work with the most profit potential, that means you're money focused. And guess what? If you're money focused, you'll never have enough. You'll never be fulfilled because you're going to always be looking. Ask anybody in this world, do you have enough money? Their answer is going to be no. Because they're always going to be looking to make more money. It's, it's called progress. It's called production. It's called uh, it's called multiplication. It's called stewardship. You, 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 you're commanded to multiply. You're going to always be finding, looking for ways to make more money. But hopefully, you're finding more ways to make more money so you can make more of a difference. That's the fulfillment part. Focus on work that has the most fulfillment potential. Once you find it, invest so much heart and soul into your work that you become one of the most competent people in your field. This is important for you to know. And, and, and I think this, this chapter is great for the people that just can't, just seem can't find the purpose. Listen, once you find it, once you find that thing that's going to give you the most fulfillment, invest so much heart and soul into it. This doesn't take money. This takes heart and soul. This takes you investing into the thing that brings you fulfillment. Once you find it, do more of it so that your work becomes one of the most, so that you become one of the most competent people in your field. You want to become the expert in the field of your fulfillment. Become the expert in the field of your fulfillment. Everybody write that in the comments below. Become the expert in the field of your fulfillment. Woo! You'll be rewarded with uncommon wealth. Uncommon wealth. Uncommon wealth. How's that sound, you guys? How, do, how does it sound to be rewarded with uncommon wealth? Just by doing what you love to do and becoming so good at it that the world is going to pay you for it. Uncommon wealth. The root cause in the, in, the, in the approach of the masses and the wealthy is the level of consciousness each operates from. The middle class from fear and scarcity. The world class from love and abundance. This difference is con in consciousness leads one group to seek survival and the other to manifest dreams. The only question that really matters is this. Which group? are you in? Which group are you in? Are you in a group that is just seeking survival? Or are you in the group that's going to manifest your dreams? See, I was at this place where I was just seeking survival. I just wanted to get that check. And I was living paycheck to paycheck. And I just wanted to get the check so that I could pay my bills. And it was a never ending cycle. But one day I woke up and hopefully this day today is going to be the day that you woke up. And I decided I was no longer going to chase the, the money I was going to chase my dreams. I decided I was no longer going to chase the money. The money was no longer important to me. What was important to me was me making an impact. And in that impact is where that fulfillment place comes from. Once I made that decision, I call it the breaking point. It's the breaking point where you decide that, hey, success is not really that important to me. Significance really is. The lottery is not really that important to me. Legacy is what's important to me. Which group are you in? Are you in a group that's just seeking survival or are you in a group that's going to manifest your dreams? Here's your quote of the day, man. Hey, everybody in the comments below, I want you to put uncommon wealth, uncommon wealth. My goodness, man, you get to that place of uncommon wealth. Look how much good you can do. Look how many lives that you can change. Look how, look how many schools that you can build. Look how many foundations that you can grow. Look how many homeless people that you can feed. Uncommon wealth. It's absolutely possible for the person that's willing to manifest their very own dreams. 
Quote of the day, a man is a success if he gets up in the morning and gets to bed at night and in between does what he wants to do. That's by Bob Dylan. A man is a success if he gets up in the morning and gets to bed at night and in between does what he wants to do. Now, here's your challenge question of the day. On a scale of one to seven, seven being the most, how fulfilling is your current occupation? You guys can answer that, man. In a scale of one to seven, seven being the most, how fulfilling is your current occupation? I'll wait. I got time. <laughs> something for you to think about. Now, you don't have to answer it here. It's a personal question. Something for you to think about. But on a scale of one to seven, seven being the most, how fulfilling is your current occupation? And if it's not a seven, guys, if it's not a six, it may be time to try something new. And what we're saying is trying something new is as simple as 15 minutes a day to keep broke away. Now, here's your action step. Here's the thing that you want to take away from today's message, today's chapter, today's 15 minutes of dropping seeds into your life, into your consciousness. If you didn't create, if you didn't rate a seven on this question, set a goal to be doing what you love to do in the next 12 to 24 months. No excuses. You can do it. If you didn't rate a seven on the previous question, set a goal to be doing what you would love to do in the next 12 to 24 months. No excuses. You can do it. Now, here's the deal, guys. I absolutely do believe that you can do it. The question is, do you want to do it? Do you want to do it? See, I realize that in, on this journey to the land of milk and honey, there's simply some people who just don't want to go. Matter of fact, Harriet Tubman said that she could have freed more slaves if they, if, the, if they knew that they were slaves. So the question I have for you today is, do you want to go? Some people don't want to be financially free. I mean, they can talk about it all day long and it sounds like a great idea, but some people just don't want to do it because guess what? They don't want to put in the effort. They don't want to put in the work to free themselves from the mess that they got themselves in. And for you, it may not be financial freedom. For you, it may be growing to the next level of prosperity. You might be comfortable where you are. Some people just don't want to go and that's okay. But I believe that I've attracted the people that want to go. I believe I've attracted people to this show that are saying, not only do I want to go, but I believe that I can go. And I'm saying to myself that I can do it. Now, of course, you guys always hear me say, not only is it possible, but it's possible for me. It's possible for you to be financially free. It's possible for you to have a house with no mortgage. It's possible for you to have a car with no loan. It's possible for you to be a student with no, with no, uh, with no loan. It's possible for you to have a car with no payment. It absolutely is possible. But the only way that it's possible is for you to say and for you to believe that it's possible for me. Well, that's our 15 minutes, guys. Hopefully today has inspired you, has dropped some seeds that maybe is going to get you to think different. Because if you think different, then you can be different. And if you can be different, if you change, if you change, then your whole world will change. Your financial world will change. Your emotional world will change. If you change 15 minutes a day, reading a book, to keep broke away. What is the ERGJ Certified Financial Educator? We're here every day, Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. I'll be here tomorrow. And the question is, will you?